In the previous video, we saw how we use linguistic cues to identify people as members of different social groups. We also use these linguistic cues to judge the speaker. We discussed accents in another video. Of course, the way we sound is a linguistic cue in this process. We also saw that an accent is more than just how you sound. But how do we perceive speakers based on the grammar structures and vocabulary they use? Stick around, we'll take a look at stereotyped perceptions of accents and non-standard grammar. Hi, welcome to Snap Language. My name is Mark Franco. Just a quick word before we begin. If you believe in the work that I do on this channel, you can support Snap Language by becoming a patron on Patreon. For less than a cup of coffee a month, you can become part of our community, gain early access to videos and exclusive content, and make it possible for me to create more videos every month. So, back to work now. This is the title of this video. It's not very precise, but you see, a more accurate title would be kind of long. Phonological and syntactical cues in listener stereotyped perceptions of speakers categorized as having standard and non-standard accents and categorized as using standard and non-standard vocabulary and grammar. Whew, that's a mouthful. Phonological cues are the differences between the sounds we and another speaker produce. We use these phonological differences to identify the speaker's speech as having an accent. Syntactical cues are differences in structure. Well, in plain English, you hear differences in grammar. For example, if you hear Nobody has time for that. Or if you hear Ain't nobody got time for that. You pick up not only on the accent, but also on different grammar structures. By the way, these phonological and syntactical differences also come with lexical differences. That's when you know someone is from a certain linguistic group because of the words or expressions they use. For example, if you say biscuit for these, you're likely from the United States. In other Englishes, these are biscuits, which are called cookies in the United States. In this video, we'll consider lexical and syntactical differences together as expressions of grammar to simplify things. Now it's about to get really interesting. So we use these phonological and syntactical cues to determine the speaker has one accent or another. These linguistic cues are also social cues in the sense that we associate them with group memberships. We perceive, we actually hear, the speaker as from a certain area or even a certain social class. It's our perception of a speaker as a member of a particular social group that triggers these stereotyped perceptions. There's a vast body of research on how we perceive standard and non-standard speech. Let's look at the broad highlights. People make judgments along two social psychological dimensions. A perceived social status dimension, and an interpersonal dimension. Perceived social status means just that. We perceive a speaker as having high or low social status based on perceptions of level of education, success, self-confidence, or being upper or lower class. On the interpersonal dimension, we perceive the speaker as being more or less friendly, sociable, sincere, trustworthy, and so on. Based on the speaker's accent alone, we perceive standard speakers higher on the social status dimension than non-standard speakers. However, a non-standard accent triggers more positive perceptions on the interpersonal dimension. That's why someone using a standard accent is generally perceived as more educated, more successful and self-confident and more likely to be upper class, but the speaker using a non-standard accent is perceived as more friendly, sociable, sincere, trustworthy, and so on. That's in general terms, though, because it depends on the accent and on the listener's own sociolinguistic group. You see, these judgments depend on what we are conditioned to think of as the standard. That's what 
educated people are supposed to sound like. What makes one person sound eloquent and another person sound uneducated? Sadly, if you want to work in broadcast, for example, you're often supposed to lose your thick regional or ethnic accent. Essentially, you're being told you need to sound more neutral. And then I met with the chair of the department. He said, Jorge, everything is fine with you, but you have a very thick accent in English. I said, you know what? I cannot get rid of my accent. Well, that's supposedly what makes you sound professional and successful, less colorful or ethnic. Now, remember that we perceive not just phonological cues, but also syntactical and lexical cues. We're calling that just standard and non-standard grammar in this video to keep it simple. So what perceptions do we have when the speaker has an accent, but uses either standard or non-standard grammar? What stereotypical perceptions get triggered? Here we see how people perceive a speaker with a non-standard accent who uses standard grammar. We see a difference in perceptions on the status dimension and on the interpersonal dimension. As you might expect, a speaker who uses non-standard grammar in addition to a non-standard accent gets rated even lower on status and even higher on the interpersonal dimension. Think of a non-native Spanish accented speaker in the United States, for example. If a speaker has an accent and has trouble with standard grammar, we tend to perceive the speaker as uneducated and low status, but also very friendly, sociable. So perhaps not part of the prestige group, but someone folksy, fun to be around. Now, imagine a situation where a speaker has changed his or her speech to conform to the standard accent, but still uses non-standard grammar or regional vocabulary. Will using the standard accent perhaps make up for the effect of the non-standard syntactical cues? Well, surprisingly, if you have a standard accent, that so-called neutral accent, but you use non-standard grammar, you're actually worse off. These cues seem to be in conflict. You sound like a standard speaker, but you use non-standard grammar? Listeners perceive you low on status and on interpersonal attributes. To put it bluntly, you sound educated, so you have no excuse to use that kind of grammar. Let's look at all these conditions together. Depending on your non-standard accent, if you use non-standard grammar, your accent seems to have a discounting effect. It's as if people expect you to use different grammar based on your accented speech. However, it seems you don't get that discounting effect if you sound like a standard speaker but use what some may consider bad grammar. But Mark, honey, don't you remember them good times? Remember what you and me went to Nantucket Island? Just two of both. We was happy then, wasn't we? On the contrary, your speech triggers the most negative stereotypical perceptions on both the status and the interpersonal dimensions. I teach English as a second language and sometimes some of my students feel discouraged because they say, I've been working so hard on my pronunciation, but people still can't understand me very well. I always tell them, you may be better off sounding like a non-native speaker. If people think you sound really good, they'll be less forgiving of your grammar and vocabulary mistakes. Now, let's go over some really important caveats. First, what I've presented here are very broad, very general findings in the sociolinguistic and social psychological research literature. I mentioned a Spanish accented speaker as an example of a low prestige accent in the United States. That example works in the United States, but in another language community, it could be any other accent, native or non-native, within that particular community. What is considered a prestige or non-prestige language variety is simply a function of culture and stereotypical perceptions. For example, around the world, 
having an American accent may be considered prestigious in some language communities, but not in others. Also, and I cannot stress this enough, when you find that a particular accent triggers stereotype perceptions as low status, or the speaker sounds uneducated or unintelligent, these are stereotypes that we learn to associate with that language variety. This is a really serious conversation with real social consequences, and it should not be taken lightly. It's definitely not a good topic for some quick comments in social media. Again, what I've been discussing here are only broad highlights of a whole body of literature. There are many other factors that explain stereotyped perceptions. For example, the speaker's physical appearance, voice quality, perceived race, and gender, and so on. Stereotyped perceptions are also changeable. Linguistic cues may trigger initial stereotyped perceptions, but by interacting with a speaker, we may collect information that dispels our initial perceptions. I had a professor in college who had a particular accent. What did I know at the time? I thought he sounded kind of dumb. Well, he turned out to be one of the best professors I've ever had, and he inspired me a lot. I suppose I was the dumb one. We all have these stereotyped perceptions. I guess what I'm saying is you get to choose what you do with them. This is deep stuff, isn't it? Now that you know, be aware of your own biases that are triggered by phonological and syntactical cues in your stereotyped perceptions of speakers that you categorize as having standard and non-standard accents, and that you categorize as using standard and non-standard vocabulary and grammar. <laughs> it's still a mouthful. And please consider supporting Snap Language by becoming a patron on Patreon. If you can't, that's fine too. You can show your support by liking and sharing this video, subscribing to Snap Language, and hitting the bell button so you don't miss any of our new videos. Till the next time, thanks for watching.